It's our 32nd study of the Bible. And today we're going to look at Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor. You say, well, what would a Roman Emperor have to do with the Bible and church? Some of the things he has done is in the Baptist churches 2021. He reigned from 312 to 337 A.D. In 311 A.D., he saw the flaming cross in the sky. And to his interpretation, this was the sign of conquer. Given his success to the Christian God. So God spoke to Constantine with a flaming cross in the sky. Go and conquer. And then he told Peter, put away the sword. Nowhere in the New Testament do you see Christians battling out. For a kingdom. That's religious. That's religion. That's politics. That's human government. That's not Christian. 313 AD, he had the edict of Milan, M I L A N, the proclamation that permanently established religious toleration for Christianity within the Roman Empire. Okay, he's going to allow Christians in the Roman, he's going to allow their practices instead of persecuting them. And at this point of 313, Christianity adopted the official state religion of the Roman Empire. Sort of like what Christians are doing today, they have adopted the Constitution of the United States of America, which does not mention God and Jesus Christ, not once. I don't care you don't like it. It's the truth. And I'm going to tell you the truth, and if I become the enemy because I've told you the truth, I probably do more for Americans than you do. I go out and witness to them. I try to tell them about Jesus Christ. I try to grow Christians. Okay, so shut up. Outlaw Christianity to the official state religion. Anybody not a Christian is persecuted in God's name under the sign of the cross by the Roman, by the ruler of Rome. This is satanic. So in other words, if you didn't become a Christian now, the Christianity has now been tolerated if you walk the streets of Rome and you were not a Christian, you would be persecuted. What happened to Jesus say, marvel not, the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. Please don't mind those birds. This is a complete opposite of the script. Baptist churches today, I'm talking about Baptists, it's supposed to be for Christians. Well, you know, this, or the city council in our city, they just love us. And our state just loves us. And these group of people just love us. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. Uh, if everybody loves you, you're not doing it right. People became Christians by government, government order. For, and for the prevention of torture and or death. That's a church-state system. You become a Christian under the penalty of death. Well, of course they're going to get big numbers. <laughs> of course everybody's going to join into this. They don't want to die. They don't want to be tortured. They kept his pagan beliefs. Constantine. As many as Baptist churches do today. 
In the Baptist churches today, you can see the Constantine toleration. We'll look at that in a moment. His claim to Christians were to be sprinkled of water on the forehead or on his deathbed. So baptism by salvation. Not immersion. There's no profession of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. They have taken Acts chapter 8. They have taken the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe in Jesus. They've taken that out of their Bible. And okay, let's just go in the water and get baptized. But at least the Ethiopian eunuch was dunked. Nowhere in the Bible were they sprinkled. Well, who follows the Bible anyway? Now, in Christianity of Constantine, the cross became magical. You would hang it up on your walls. You would wear it around your, your, your boobies. You may even get it tattooed. You put it up on the walls of your house. You put it hanging from your rearview mirror. You could kill vampires with it. The sign of the cross, the wearing of the cross, or the cross on a building equals supernatural powers. This is during the realm of Constantine, the fake Christian who allowed toleration and that the Roman came into Christianity and joined together. And today you have Baptist churches that have the cross. They had the cross on top of the penis called a steeple. You got people who wear the cross. And the Bible says, Cursed be he that hangeth on a tree. The cross is a curse. Not a magical realm of stupidity. In the Christianity now, you have a state religion. No church and state. Here it was now. You were forced to be a Christian. You had that in the Congregational Church up north in, in New England. You had to belong to that church. You had to pay taxes to that church. And if you didn't, they confiscated your land and your animals. Congregational Church. That was the, that was the black hats of the pilgrim. The church field... Wait a minute. The church held a sword. But again, Peter said, put the sword down. And today you got Christians lobbying for gun rights. All right, welcome to Constantine. Welcome to Constantine, the fake Christian. Your guns are not helping with COVID-19. Your guns have not helped the tornadoes that ravaged the past week. Your guns have not stopped the hurricane. Your guns have not start has not stopped the fires in California. Your guns have not filled the shelves at the grocery stores. We are not a militant right now group of people under the cross. We are missionaries, we are pilgrims, we are evangelists. Going about with the gospel, we come back behind Jesus at the second advent when Jesus got his sword, and we come back behind then as an army, not now. Priests is now the office, no longer preachers and politicians. State, church, and state, you got politicians and you got priests. There are no preachers, there are no pastors. You now belong to the Catholic order. Now you got politics. You know what runs rapid in the, in the Baptist churches today? Politics. 
well, we got to get rid of those Democrats because we Republicans got guns and, 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 and the, the flag. And you got Baptist churches today, they, pl they preach nothing but civil rights, rights, and their prophets of Martin Luther King and other activists in Baptist churches. Also, well, watch this, watch this, Constantine, fake Christian. Pastors were exempt from paying taxes. Is your church tax exempt? You are under the Constantine fake Christian. Let me read you something in Mark 12, 17. Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. And they all marveled at him. Look at your money. You got money of Washington, United States officials. Yeah, it may have God in trust, but that's a joke. That money belongs to Washington, D.C. Well, I, I earned it. I work for it. There are people working in other countries. They work and they don't get nothing. Just bare amount of food. If your church is tax exempt, Jesus paid taxes. Jesus said, Peter, go catch that fish, take the money that's out of his mouth, and pay for the taxes. And now I know Baptists don't like me saying, oh, you know, to pay taxes, pay taxes, pay taxes. Jesus did. Paul says in Romans 13, pay to the dues that are due. I believe in Peter said about taxes. We are to pay taxes and the church is exempt. You are under the fake Christian. You are under the Catholic Baptist or Baptist Catholic Church. The, the Catholics call it a vow of poverty. The Baptists call it tax exempt. Pastors were also exempt from military duty. Ah, oh, look at the Jehovah Witnesses. You know the greatest stories of our American Civil War were the men that were behind the pulpits. And they left their Bible, sorry to say, and they grabbed a gun and went forth. And those men on Sunday afternoons, there would be a rest. They would preach to the soldiers, north and south. They defended their country and they preached the Bible. Churches were filled with unbelievers. All are welcome. And I've seen that sign on Baptist churches. You got churches today. There are few believers. Many unbelievers. And they say, well, bring them in, bring them in. And they don't get saved. Or they get an artificial uh, salvation of just say this prayer. Or just walk this altar. And hallelujah, they're saved. And their name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And from the unbelievers, the Baptist churches have the world in them. And in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus Christ is standing outside the Laodicean church. Where are they going crazy there? 325 AD, you became a Christian by the orders of Constantine, again, or you died. And it was a great revival. Thousands turned to Christianity or die. 
You know, I think I think the devil is going to fool America because everybody wants this great revival in America. I think there's going to be something happen like the Constantine orders. You're going to have to go to church, or you're going to face persecution. You're not going to be able to get this. You're not going to be able to do that. You may have to have a COVID nineteen card, or you don't have a job. Under the penalty of persecution, there may be in America, I believe, you have to join a church or a religion, whatever it is, or you won't get. And there are going to be thousands of people. Look at that. Look at our churches filled. Look at that great revival. And they're not saved. They're dying, going to hell. And Jesus Christ is still standing outside the door, knocking. And it, it will be called the Great Deception. Not the great revival. Unbelieving pagans joined the churches. And when they joined the church, they brought the pagan beliefs and practices and traditions. And they were Christianized. The pagan practices, and two of them are called Easter and Christmas. And I attended a, a, a place... With a group of people, a good sized amount of people. And what we're going to do is we're going to today, we're going to talk about our family Christian tradition. What do you remember? What do you do as a Christmas tradition? And many people spoke. And I sat there with a pen and a paper. And I was going to jot down how many times Jesus Christ or the gospel was mentioned by those people. I had no jots to write down. Jesus Christ. Though it's the birthday of Jesus. We know Jesus was not born to December 25th. But we bring Jesus into it. In a room full of testimony. And, and, and traditions of Christmas. And Jesus was absent from the words of the people. The first council of Nicaea, 325 AD. The first ecumenical council of the Catholic Church. It was called to order by Constantine. It would be united in Christendom. He was made the president. You know where you find presidents in, in the Bible? You find them as Babylonian authorities who wanted Daniel dead. Go, go look it up. Constantine's rule regarding Nicaea was that he was the supreme civil leader and the authority of the empire. And I, I read something like that. I think of the, the, the Star Wars music. Dun, 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 however they do it. In other words, he's setting himself up as literally the first pope. The Pope that has the authority over the state and the authority over the religion, state religion. An Iranian heresy from Alexandria, Egypt in 300 AD. Jesus is a God, but not God. Jesus is a small G, but he's not the big G, God. And the Jehovah Witnesses believe that. The KJV. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he declared him. The ESV. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side, he has he has made him know what happened to begotten son. ESV has not had Jesus as God. They back up the, the, the Catholic Church, they back up Constantine, they back up the Jehovah Witness. The NIV, no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God. And is the closest relationship to the Father. He has made him know. Everything is going good. But the closest relationship. The 
Frank, my brother, it was my brother. We were brothers by blood, but we did not have a close relationship together. I've had other people who were closer in the relationship to me and friends, and, and but they were not my brother. The RSV. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. Another thing that came from the Council of Nicaea is the Bible is not the inerrant word of God by the Holy Spirit. It's a book now of ideas, thoughts, and practices. It ranks up there with time and life and Reader's Digest. You can go reading through Reader's Digest and say, hey, you know what? That has nothing to do with me. That uh, I'm not, I could do that, but I don't want to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that. And for them, the Bible is, I don't read the Old Testament. It's boring. It's a good book, but as a church-state system, our traditions override what the Bible says. And where the traditions in the Bible conflict, the Pope and the archbishops will tell you, Nonsense. In the Rome Center, you have Latin. A language that many people didn't even understand. And the Antioch Center, Constantinople, the Benzene, Empire, the Benzene Empire, and the Alexandria Center, you got Egypt. Antioch is where our Bible came from. Rome is where Constantine came from, and that's where all the Roman practices have come into the Baptist Catholic churches today. You got the, the, the three wise men coming at the same time as the shepherds, and the Bible says they were two different periods of time, and the Bible never says they were three wise men. You got a lot of mythology and magic, magic and, and traditions crept into the Baptist Catholic churches that are defy the scripture. And when I deal with some of these Christians, I tell them the church. And I show them in the Bible the way, I never seen that. Yeah, go blame your lack of Bible reading. Go black go back and blame your not studying the Bible and go back and, and say, Pastor, why ain't you teaching us the Bible? Even my birds get upset at that. <laughs> That's what it comes down to.